Alright guys, I'm over here at Always RV in Mesa, Arizona. And I'm working on a 2006 Holiday Rambler Ambassador. Now, the owner, actually, uh, he's Canadian and he just keeps us down here. So when he comes to visit during the, uh, the nicer weather here, I don't know. I, I, I'm in a jacket, I'm cold. Um, he just sets it up at a park and then stores it here and then uh, goes back to Canada. That's a long story just to get around to the point where I'm trying to get to. He's replaced his chassis batteries and his house batteries are garbage. But his chassis batteries, because uh, he doesn't start the engine very much, they don't hold the charge. But he keeps us plugged in at a park and has a hard time with the chassis battery starting the engine when he tries to get, get, bring it back. So Holiday Rambler and Monaco, they didn't set up the uh, chassis batteries to charge off the inverter the charger when it's plugged in they have a simple uh isolator relay delay so it would just uh charge the house battery off the engine and it, the, the isolator delay is just again kind of like the other one so it doesn't start charging the chassis bat or the house batteries immediately it gives the uh, alternator time to ramp up and uh it's also the charge relay is the auxiliary start and this one got burned out because like a lot of owners they just wedge something underneath the switch to keep the chassis batteries charged or uh, start up the uh, engine off the, cha uh, the house batteries and that burns out that relay over time. So you notice this uh, golf tees right there. That's what he was using to wedge underneath the switch there to keep it on. And... Uh, he wouldn't be the first one to do that. I've done that many times. I just use a ballpoint pen to do the exact same thing. And uh, believe it or not, the fuse to that was blown because of that for some reason. So what we're going to do, he wants uh, to charge the chassis batteries when it's plugged in. I uh, gave him the option of just getting a battery tender to plug in. But since he's not around this very often, he doesn't want to hook that up and unhook it each time and there's no 110 outlet by the uh, batteries to hook up to. So we're going to install a bird or hack the system, remove the old isolator relay and put this bi-directional isolator relay in so that it's charging the chassis batteries when he's plugged in and of course it'll still charge the house batteries when it's running the engine. And of course the auxiliary start will still work. So that's what we're going to do. Let's get to work. All right, well, here are the batteries. We got the house batteries right there, and they're garbage. The chassis batteries aren't much better. There's the charged solenoid. That's also bad because it's been abused. Because that's why we're doing this. So now I just covered these batteries very recently. So I'm gonna replace these batteries, probably the chassis batteries and then the charge solenoid all at the same time. All right, so I'll get those batteries replaced, the solenoid replaced, and so when we come back, that'll be done. Because that's not gonna be anything different than we've been doing. All right, so with the batteries hooked up, I just got my jumper there on, uh, on ground, which is the same, chassis ground and house ground are the same, so I just have it hooked up to my lead there. So if I had to check battery voltage for house, there, that positive terminal, we're at 12.50. And if I go over to the chassis side, we are at 12.64, which seems about right. To go to uh, that terminal right there, that should be house. So we're at 12.5 again. And we're at 12.6, which is a chassis battery. So we got all that hooked up. Now we can actually do what we planned on doing. Here's the uh, control box from Monaco. It's got these three plastic wing nuts that take forever to take off. I think it's overkill. I generally only put one of them back on. All right, so right here is the isolator relay delay. This is not bi-directional, it's single directional. Uh, so we're gonna be disabling that and we're gonna be hacking the system in to put a bird so that we're charging the chassis batteries when we're charging the house batteries. And of course it'll then charge the chassis or the house batteries when it's charging the chassis batteries. This is a pretty common setup on uh, on these Monacos. 
And then this is the house battery disconnect, and that's a really common solenoid go bad too. All right, let's get back to work. Now, luckily I've already mapped this all out beforehand. So in this box, not every box is identical. This purple wire right there is the one going back to that solenoid. So if you notice on that charge solenoid, they had a white wire, which is ground, and then a purple wire, which is this purple wire. So coming out of the box right there, this is gonna be from the auxiliary start. So we need to make sure that that's still gonna work. So what I have to do is wedge my golf tee back underneath there. Keep that switch pushed down. All right, and you'll see that this light is on because I'm trying to use auxiliary start. And then from, it would come out of the board from there to the purple wire back to the that solenoid. So I need to just cut the wire here so I'm not trying to solder on a lead right there. And then since we have chassis battery here and we have house battery right there and we have ground, we have everything we need for the isolator to work. Let's take a look at it. All right, like I said before, this isolator relay delay was just monodirectional so if the engine was running and it saw chassis battery voltage being above i think 12.9 or 13 volts it would then send power out to this purple wire here to engage that charge solenoid which is this guy right there it's continuous duty and it would charge the house batteries with the engine going now if the house batteries are so low that it was dropping chassis battery below the threshold which is generally 12.9 it would then disengage that solenoid so that uh, we weren't running the engine batteries too low. So this is the IntelliTech bird that I'm fighting with that we're going to be putting in, in its place. This is bidirectional. So not only will it work off uh, if the engine's running, it'll charge the house batteries. If the uh, house batteries are being charged above that threshold of about 12.9, 13 volts, it'll then engage guy right there to charge the chassis batteries when you're plugged in uh, and then most of these uh, diesel units are going to have a inverter on it and so they have a three-stage charging on the inverter so you have bulk absorption and float and so they'd all kick down to float and so you're not going to be boiling your chassis batteries so if you look on this we have generator we don't have to worry about that ignition is of course chassis battery coach battery your solenoid which is that guy right there in the back and then ground so we have coach battery right there chassis battery right there ground right there and then this purple wire is going out to solenoid so we're gonna have to basically put a y in here to, to connect to solenoid right there that way the auxiliary start will still work and then this will be able to feed up to the auxiliary start we don't really have to worry about putting a diode so it's not back feeding to that switch on the dash because that's just a switch on the dash uh, it would be open so let's get this thing wired up and see if it's working all right so i just mount the uh the bird right here in this compartment so it should be pretty well secured uh this is the wire that's coming from the auxiliary start switch and then this is the wire going back to the uh, the solenoid. That guy back there. Now, they were connected together right there. But now I can reconnect them together using a yellow spade connector. So I haven't really done anything. And they'll just go to the exact same spot right there. Well, that makes more sense now. So just the one connector, two wires going into it. And don't pay attention to that purple wire. That one's coming from auxiliary start out from the switch and then this one's going back to the solenoid. So now that should engage the solenoid. And of course I very recently dropped my electrical connector so I can't find anything very easily right now. I still have to sort this back up again. But I'm almost done. Alright guys, I think I got it done for you now. So I have this ignition, that's, how, that's chassis battery, that's going to chassis right there, I did put a fuse on it. And then that's coach battery that's going down to coach hookup right here. Now on coach battery, this is going to be unswitched. So on this battery disconnect, this is all-time power. This is a disconnect power. So we want to make sure we're always on uh, all-time power. That way, if somebody forgot to turn the batteries on, it'll still charge the house batteries because it'll be able to see it. This bird needs to see both battery voltages. If it doesn't see it, it doesn't work properly. Again, the bird is... Uh, something of a microprocessor. It has a built-in logic to it. So if one... 
uh, one battery is actually being charged and uh, it will go ahead and engage that charged solenoid to allow the other set of batteries to be charged and vice versa, hence the bidirectional. Again, if battery voltage starts pulling down too low on one side, it'll disengage that char charged solenoid so that if you're driving the coach, you don't run out of battery power because the house batteries are shorted out. Uh, the only other thing I really need to do is remove this isolator delay just because I don't want somebody to say, oh, that's supposed to be plugged in right there. So I'm going to get that module pulled out. And it's this is actually a pretty common module to go bad. You can replace just this part on most Monaco's. And again, this just controls that solenoid back there. So if the chassis batteries aren't charging uh, the house battery on your Monaco and your solenoid is good, but it's not being told to charge, it's likely going to be this relay right there. So let's get that pulled out and let's test this thing out. I need those. Ooh. Oh, there's the key in the ignition. I haven't even started this thing up yet. Let's see if it starts. All right, well that started, that's good. Let's go check the battery voltages. I just heard that click in, so this isn't fair. So let's see, we're at 13 and a half, 13.6. Yeah, we're at 13.1. And try and climbing. So far, so good. Now we need to start the generator. Get so we at the. Uh... All right. So now what I need to do is turn off the engine. All right. And now I'm in a storage facility over at Always, so I don't have any way to plug in the shore power, so I'm going to start the generator. So once the generator goes, we'll get 110 power, and then that should turn the inverter on to start charging the house batteries. And so once that happens, start charging the chassis batteries with the house when the house batteries are being charged. So I think the inverter panel's back here. Right there, we're waiting for uh, battery voltage to catch up. So we're at 12.6, so we just got 110 power. Looks like we're gonna be uh, bulk charging here shortly. We'll wait for our EMS, that'll start going up in amperage as this starts going up. All right, so now we're charging the house batteries there. Let's go outside and see the chassis batteries getting charged. We are charging. So 13.87. Right off the uh, charger there. So, looks like that's working now too. Now I just need to put everything away. All right, let's go ahead and button this all back up. Hope you guys heard that thing click out. I don't know if it did or not. But yeah, these are annoying. I don't know why they put so many of these wing nuts on. Like I said, I generally put the middle one on tight. And then the other two, I just uh, put on so we don't lose them. It's not like a load-bearing piece of equipment. It's just a cover for fuses. I don't know why you have to put so many wing nuts on there. All right, let's get our mess cleaned up and go review what we did. All right, so there we were, we, I don't want to call it a hack because it sounds like I'm a hack, but we did use the existing wiring and the existing system and put a different module in so we can charge the chassis batteries off the house batteries and we can uh, still charge the, cha the house batteries off the chassis. So we just put that module in as a bi-directional relay delay instead of the monodirectional relay delay that Monaco and Hol Holiday Rambler put on these uh, generations of uh, motorhomes, diesel pushers. Uh, I know the other thing I didn't hooked up was that it said gen set on it. That's an option that we're not using. Uh, it should, some of these birds don't even have the gen set as a uh, spade connection, but that's just an, another way of uh, hooking up power to it. Uh, I'm sure you guys might have questions. I'll do my best to answer them. Uh, but I think that's it for now. I have to go fix a door now. We'll see if I'll make a video out of that one.
then we should start charging the chassis batteries with the uh, uh, or char start charging the chassis batteries with the engine. Ba uh, I'm gonna get this. All right, well I got the new relay installed. It's best time to do it when there's no batteries. Cleaned up this tray as best as I think it needs to be, but this is why I have nothing but disdain when people talk about powder coating. So that's what powder coating gets you. I don't know if you can see that. It's not the end all be all of everything. That's the paint that flaked off the steel, even though it was properly adhered, but look at that. It just stuck. It, it, it just got the, uh, <laughs> the acid just got underneath it anyways. And so it's not the end all be all of anything. You can see this stuff just peels off. There's really nothing you're ever going to do to keep that from happening in the future other than constantly wash it off. But this is all a bunch of acid. <sighs> Stop complaining. Let me get some uh, batteries put in there. Yeah, that's look at that. Whole thing will just peel off. Ooh. Hey, just put some batteries in.